Hey friends, Asher with Jensen. Hope you're doing really well. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at some affordable fragrances that got pretty good performance. So these fragrances, each one, pretty good projection, pretty good longevity. Got a lot of bang for your buck here. Some of these are gonna be more spring and summer. Some of these are gonna be more fall and winter. Got a lot of different stuff to talk about. Let's just jump into it. Let's just get things started right away with Bogart Pour Homme. Bogart, I like saying that. This one I've talked about a number of times. If you look at this presentation and you don't know what's inside the bottle here, you might think to yourself, oh, that looks like a fragrance from the 80s. I don't trust that fragrance. Now, while I don't think it's nice to be ageist against fragrances from the 80s, this one does not smell like a fragrance from the 80s because it's not from the 80s. I was just saying the presentation kind of maybe looks a little throwbackish. This one actually gets compared to a number of different fragrances that are very popular, including Stronger With You from Emporio Armani, Pure Havan from Mugler, and Code Profumo from Giorgio Armani. Now, none of those three fragrances actually smells Super similar. And yet this one gets compared to all three. It's got Tonka, Patchouli, Lavender, and Orange Blossom as some of the notes in the fragrance. And while this doesn't smell exactly like any one of those three fragrances I mentioned, you could say it's done in a similar style. You could say maybe it's in the same family of fragrances. So what does that mean? It means this one is sexy, sweet, and appealing. Really easy to wear, and like I said before, great bang for your buck. Let's keep things going with Boss Bottled Intense. And this one right here is the Eau de Parfum. There's also an Eau de Toilette version. Apple, cinnamon, vanilla, and woods, some of the notes in the scent. And if you love the Boss Bottle DNA, you will love this fragrance. And frankly, I think if you want something that's gonna give you a really close feeling and close vibe to that original Boss Bottle, but done in a better, more appealing, modern way, this one right here, that's what you want. The apple, cinnamon, and vanilla in here combine to make this awesome apple pie kind of accord, which of course the original Boss Bottle had as well, but with this one, it has a little additional warmth. It's got this nice coziness to it. So Boss Bottled Intense Eau de Parfum, really great buy, and one of the better fragrances actually in the entire Boss Bottled line. Next fragrance we're gonna take a look at is a personal favorite of mine. It is Versace, the dreamer. It's a classy looking bottle. I really dig it. Some people may not like that a whole lot, but I do. The atomizer's built right into the top, little Medusa right there. It's good looking. Lavender, tobacco, tonka, and rose, along with carnation, some of the notes in this fragrance. The opening is a little bit divisive to some people, but you know what? I love it a lot, so I'm just gonna go ahead and blast myself on the side of the face. The opening for me is actually my favorite part of the fragrance. It's really unique, sets itself apart. The tobacco in here, a little bit on the drier side, not a super sweet pipe tobacco, but it works really well. And the lavender actually is gonna be one of the main notes that comes out there. This lavender and tobacco kind of mixing together with florals through the mid, still very masculine, fantastic fragrance. Now some people are gonna say, not masculine enough, not masculine like my Dracar Noir. Now I gotta agree with you. That doesn't even make any sense in the context of this video. Next up, we've got a fragrance from Issey Miyake, Nui DC Parfum. Now you can take a look at this bottle right here and you can tell right away that this is gonna be more of a wintertime fragrance, all right? They don't put summertime fragrances in bottles like this. Leather, tonka, vanilla, pink pepper, and patchouli are some of the notes in this fragrance. And that is the third time that I did that because I kept saying vanilla. Leather, tonka, vanilla, <laughs> no! Vanilla. The leather in here, you don't need to worry about. It's not too aggressive, it's not dirty or anything like that because it's contrasted by the vanilla and the tonka which makes it actually this really sweet kind of sexy leather. There's also just regular Nuit DC, but I would go Nuit DC Parfum, a little bit higher quality, a little more depth, a little more richness. Up next is a fragrance that gets a little bit of hate. It's from the house of Burberry, and it is Mr. Burberry Eau de Parfum. It's got cardamom, mint, patchouli, and lavender as some of the notes in the fragrance. And the Mr. Burberry line, it's done by Francis Kirkshon. He did Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mans, so it's got a big name behind it, but it was done kind of as a Burberry's take on a blue fragrance. So by that I mean, of course, Burberry's version of a fragrance that would compete with fragrances like Bleu de Chanel, Dior Sauvage, Yves Saint Laurent Y, Versace Dylan Blue, and more. And Burberry went a slightly more grown up path with their fragrances. They're not quite as sweet as the ones that I just mentioned, and they do have sort of an herbal facet to them. And they didn't seem to catch on quite as much as those fragrances that I mentioned. 
but they are actually really solid, very easy to wear, very versatile. And because they did not catch on quite as much as those other fragrances, you can usually find them for a pretty good price. So Mr. Burberry Eau de Parfum, that one is going to be fantastic for both day and evening wear. You can wear it spring, you can wear it fall, you can wear it winter. It does have a lot of appeal to it. But do be aware, it's not going to have quite as much of that, that attention-grabbing sweetness that Bleu de Chanel, Yves Saint Laurent Y, a Dior Sauvage, Versace Dillon Blue, a Bulgari Aqua Atlantique, and on and on do have. Up next, fragrance from the house of Azaro Chrome United. Now you can put a whole bunch of Azaro Chrome flankers into this list. Most of them are had for a pretty good price, and most of them have pretty good performance. Now you might occasionally find one that's not really up to snuff, but most of them you could work into a list like this pretty well. This one has violet leaf, black tea, musk, and bergamot as some of the notes in the fragrance. It's got a, a slight metallic feel to it along with a shower gel clean kind of vibe. This one's got a really sporty feel to it. Gonna be great for spring, great for summer, great for daytime use, great for casual use. Like probably 90% of chrome fragrances actually. And this one's gonna be great for younger guys, but because of that black tea, it kind of gives it this little bit of a little bit of an edge to it. This nice little tiny touch of sophistication in there along with the shower gel and metallic feel. So somebody in their middle age could pull that off pretty easily too. You know what, let's go from metallic feel to a little bit of a metallic feel. Let's go ahead and do that. Pure Excess from Paco Rabanne is up next in this one. I like a lot. This one has mint, bergamot, juniper, and rosemary. Absolutely love this fragrance. Think it smells awesome. Actually has a similarity to Creed's Himalaya. So this one is gonna give you a similar smell to Creed's Himalaya, just without the Creed price tag. And this one came first. So Creed, copy and Paco Rabanne's homework. Let's see what you did. You're guilty. This one also used to have a different bottle design. It used to be taller, used to be thinner, but they've put all of the XX fragrances into bottles that look like this. And this one's got that cool Zippo top. Oh, that was loud. I really like it, but it is sometimes kind of a pain when you're trying to, you know, aim this and you've got this top in your way, but it doesn't really bother me that much. So this one's gonna be really soapy and musky and has a little bit of that metallic feel that I talked about before. Between the two, Chrome United and XS, I would take XS, but that's just me. Next up, we got a fragrance from Dunhill. It is Desire Extreme. And look, it's another kind of flip top cap. I didn't really plan that, but whatever. Sometimes these things happen. I will say though, this bottle feels much cheaper than the XS bottle. That top feels, feels a little flimsy, but that's okay, it still works. It just doesn't inspire a ton of confidence. This one has blood orange, leather, saffron, and cypress as some of the notes in the fragrance. This one is sweet and strong. Initially, you get that blood orange, you get that spicy saffron mixing in together with it, and the blood orange here really packs a punch. It's not a super refreshing, juicy blood orange, it's a, it's a very sweet blood orange and, and powerful, that's why I'm doing this. Leather comes out on this one more as it dries down, really nice actually. Some people compare it to Polo Red Extreme by Ralph Lauren. This is one of the better fragrances in the Dunhill Desire line which are the Dunhill fragrances that come in bottles like this. Most of them are pretty boring, generic, forgettable, but this one, surprisingly, not too bad. Up next, we have Mont Blanc Legend Spirit. This one right here is essentially Mont Blanc's take on Invictus Aqua from Paco Rabanne. So this is gonna get you a very similar scent profile to Invictus Aqua without actually being Invictus Aqua. Grapefruit, water, musk, and lavender are some of the notes in this fragrance. So this one's gonna give you that citrusy, sweet, modern, aquatic feel to it. It's got kind of a salty warmth as well. Really, really appealing. Fantastic in spring, fantastic in summer. Big compliment puller. And Mont Blanc Legend is one of those lines that consistently has fragrances at good prices that are really, really appealing and very easy to wear. And that's gonna take us to the last fragrance in this list. It is from Perry Ellis and it is America. Pineapple, lavender, bergamot, rose, and birch. Some of the notes in the fragrance. This one smells similar to Creed's Aventus. Yeah. So this is gonna get you that very appealing, citrusy, pineapple-y opening, very fruity, very sweet. As it dries down, you get that birch, which is one of the main notes that you're gonna find in Creed's Aventus. Gives it the smoky, kind of woody dry down. 
This one has all of that. Of course, America does have this lavender note that's fairly prominent that you pick up that you're not really gonna pick up in Creed's Aventus, but for the most part, that one is Perry Ellis' take on Creed Aventus. And with it being a Creed Aventus style fragrance comes versatility. You can use it just about anytime, daytime, nighttime, almost year round. And that one, Perry Ellis America, the last fragrance in this list. So there we go guys, 10 different fragrances, some of these more for spring, summer, some more for fall, winter, some more daytime, some more nighttime, but they all are great buys and they all have good performance. I wanna thank you all for hanging out with me today. I wanna thank you for all your support. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.